Our story brings us back to 1975 to the horrible murder of John Hardin. This is a compelling and gripping story for many reasons. Not only is it the only unsolved murder in Claremont, Florida, but police never found enough evidence to even name a suspect. While this case leaves so much to the unknown, it is easy to understand why the alleged spirit of John Hardin would remain until justice is served. We will dive in and explore the case of John's murder and his ghost that is said to still wander the Victorian home to this day. One night, John smelled smoke and looked out the window to find his truck in flames. While trying to put out the fire, an unidentified person shot him in the chest with a 20 gauge shotgun. Bizarrely, seven years earlier in August 1968, a woman from Richmond, Virginia named June Ferris began having strange dreams of a house that she had never been to before. In them, she ran down the back staircase and out the door before waking up. In 1972, June and her family packed up and moved to Florida. Two years later, she was driving through Claremont when an old Victorian house caught her eye. A few weeks later, she and a friend went inside it and explored each of the rooms when she suddenly began to experience deja vu, in which she felt that she had been there before. When she got to the back staircase, she realized that it was the house from her dreams. A few years later, June and her family moved into the house. Shortly thereafter, they soon began experiencing unusual phenomena. They claimed a ghost haunted the house, dressed in the same clothing Hardin wore the night of his death, and used the same back stairway that led to his demise. In reality, numerous inhabitants of the residence reported unexplained activity, which eventually drew the attention of the television show Unsolved Mysteries. Returning to the night John Hardin was murdered, Upon returning from the work call prior to midnight, Hardin took a shower and then noticed from the bathroom window that his work truck was on fire. Rushing down the back staircase in his flannel shirt and jeans, Hardin emerged into his yard to save his vehicle. The Slayer then ambushed him with a shotgun blast to the back. Police and investigators determined that the perpetrator intentionally set fire to the work truck to lure Hardin out of the house. Allegedly, Neighbors who noticed the burning truck called the fire department and rushed over to help. The back of the Hardin's house had a turnoff from the driveway that led past the back porch and into their yard. This is where police believe the culprit waited for Hardin that night, suspecting that the entire family may have stumbled upon him if they hadn't used the front door to enter their home. Police surmise, after setting Hardin's work truck on fire, the culprit likely settled back into the shrubs to wait for his target to descend the stairs. As Hardin began to move toward his truck with a fire extinguisher, the slayer shot him in the back. Neighbors alerted to the fire either heard the shotgun and mistook it for an explosion or saw the flames from their homes and called emergency services. Hardin's body was already on the ground when community members arrived at the scene. It took only one minute from call to arrival of emergency services, and the small truck fire was soon out with the help of a couple of neighbors. The fire's small size contributed to the police's hunch that the fire was a tool to get Hardin outside. After being transported to the hospital, Hardin sadly died from his injuries. Although police created a list of suspects, none of the material provided sufficient probable cause to warrant an arrest. Investigators discovered the shotgun used in the bushes behind the Hardin house, and pellets scattered the ground and embedded themselves in door frames, but no suspect was ever identified. The home is located close to the boat ramps and riverfront district of Claremont, with some outlets theorizing that the culprit simply strolled away from the Hardin home and to a waiting boat. Another strange detail in this story involves Hardin's first wife, Rita, high school sweethearts, the two married around 1961 and lived in Jacksonville with their children. After 14 years of marriage, Hardin left Rita and his children. He then went on to marry his second wife, Victoria. The couple left Jacksonville with their infant child and moved into the home in Claremont around 1974. After his death, Hardin received a headstone for his grave in Claremont's Montford Cemetery from the military. Sources reported that Hardin's widow, Victoria, never spent another night in the house after her husband's demise. 
the restless spirit of John Hardin. Some time after, several families purchased and lived in the home since the murder. One tale concerning the home being haunted supposedly involved an elderly couple and their visiting grandson. According to the story, the grandson left the house to meet up with a girl. When he re-entered the home from the back stairs, his screams woke his grandparents. His grandfather rushed to the staircase and slipped in blood. When the grandmother found the pair, the grandson had a nasty cut on his head from the fall, and her husband lay near him, unconscious from his own tumble. Allegedly, the grandson remembered nothing of the events of the evening and refused to go near the house again. The grandparents sold the home immediately and moved. June Ferris Long after Hardin's demise, and the tales of the haunting circulated only among townsfolk in Claremont, a woman named June Ferris previously had recurring dreams about the Victorian home. After migrating with her family from Virginia to Florida, Ferris attended an open house for the Hardin house. She declared it to be the home she had envisioned for years, and the Ferris family moved in four years later. The family later claimed that strange things began happening at once. The Ferris family claimed that music boxes in the home would wind themselves up and play. They heard tapping, footsteps, slamming doors, and other noises that seemed unconnected to anyone living in the home. June Ferris also claimed she saw the apparition of a man in his 30s as she walked upstairs. One night, June's daughter, Lori, and her boyfriend, Bob, were watching television when they heard the back door slam. They then heard the sounds of heavy male footsteps walking behind them. However, when Bob went to investigate, nobody was there. On another occasion, their boat hitch lifted itself off its stand in the driveway twice. The Ferris family looked into the history of their home, learning about Hardin's slaying. Supposedly, the back staircase he took to the backyard was the same one June Ferris dreamed of prior to moving to Florida and finding the house. They decided the apparition of the man in his thirties they saw in the home was Hardin based on his appearance and habit of checking on their grandchildren. Furthermore, June believed he hoped to solve his demise through her, but unfortunately this didn't happen. After selling the house, Ken and Donna Hatley purchased it in 1990. They experienced the same alleged haunting as the Ferris family. During a business meeting where Ken spoke about his experiences in the house, Unsolved Mysteries producer Nikki Wine successfully lobbied to have the house and all of its stories on the television show in 1991. After hearing about the supposed haunting from the current owners, Nikki put Hardin's case on the television show. The wider audience for the only unsolved murder in Claremont spurred police to declare the case fully open and awaited any tips or calls spurred by the show airing. Unfortunately, no new leads came from the show, even though it garnered impressive viewership. Although the show's producers claimed that 80% of the cases they highlighted went on to be solved, Police did not receive any calls the day of the airing. To this day, the case remains unsolved. While the Hatleys lived in the Hardin house, they employed the talents of the Center for Paranormal Studies in Gainesville to investigate their supposed haunting. According to Dr. Andrew Nichols, the house met the criteria for being haunted, and the investigation yielded a photo of the spirit. The Hatleys believed the evil that took place that night in 1975 imbued the home with Hardin's presence and the possibility of more ghosts supposedly roaming the house. After the Unsolved Mysteries episode aired highlighting Hardin's unsolved case and the alleged hauntings in his former home, the then current homeowners, Ken and Donna Hatley, said the activity slowed. Prior to the end of the supposed haunting, the Hatleys reported seeing the ghost of a man wearing a flannel shirt and jeans in their home. Supposedly a visitor, producer Michael Anthony, saw the ghost of Hardin in the home accompanied by angels and spent time praying with Donna afterward. Another guest at a dinner party allegedly joked about the ghost before it appeared to him and the rest of the Hatley guests. There were also claims of doorknobs turning on their own, bursts of cold air, and other paranormal happenings during their time in the house.
All these years later, John's killer remains unknown, as does the reason if one even exists John Harden was shot to death on the night of Saturday, March 22, 1975. He was 32 years old at the time, and if alive today, he would currently be 81. We don't know much about John's life, but we do know he mattered to his children, to his wife, and even to his ex-wife. He also didn't deserve the ending he was given. Shot down in his own driveway trying to put out a fire that was used to lure him into the kill zone. For nearly half a century, those with knowledge of this case have kept it to themselves. Maybe after all this time someone might be willing to share what they know, because without new information, new evidence, or an outright confession, the murder of John Harden will remain open, unsolved, and ice cold. What are your thoughts on this case? Is the ghost of John Harden truly restless and left to wander the halls of his former home, day after day until his murder is solved? Leave your comments and thoughts below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, and if you're new here, welcome. Be sure to hit the bell to get notified when new videos are uploaded. If you're interested in more creepy stories, be sure to check out my other haunting videos covering everything to famous hauntings to the dark and unknown. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and listen.